We understand that one of the things the president may talk about is the idea of socialism, and he may go straight at it. Um, do you think that's the right approach? Well, I mean, he's going to take whatever approach he's going to take, and and that the that he's going to use this opportunity to criticize a 70 percent tax. Obviously, uh, Elizabeth Warren has come out with a wealth tax. I don't know how that would be structured. I haven't seen enough detail on it. But at the end of the day, you know, I think everybody. It, it goes back to what I've been saying all along, Andrew. You got to you got to come with facts. And the reason why you see those numbers is because wealth generates wealth. And if you have wealth in this country. You earn wealth, you earn income on your wealth, and it's taxed at a lower rate. And that's something that is a fact, and we need to address. But, you know, I, I think that he's going to queue up those political debates that will lead to the 2020 election. He's going to want to say all Democrats believe that we should have a 70 percent tax. He's going he's gonna to drive home his uh, narrative, and that's how we now use the State of the Union. Instead of actually talking about the State of the Union, it becomes a political speech, but, and it's but, not really particularly helpful. Let me just ask you, though, about what's going on in the Democratic Party right now, because uh, earlier this morning, uh, we looked at a video uh, from uh, Bernie Sanders uh, and Chuck Schumer, both uh, talking about taxing uh, buybacks and, and, and trying to prevent buybacks. We've obviously heard uh, about AOC and her 70 percent uh, uh, tax on the wealthy. We, uh, uh, then there's this uh, you know, a wealth tax uh, that's been introduced or at least uh, proposed uh, by Elizabeth Warren. Is that what the Democratic Party really is right now? Yeah, I don't think you can conflate um, addressing the corporate buybacks with uh, uh, an income tax on individuals. So if we could just separate those, Andrew, I think that would be important. So let's talk about buybacks. It used to be illegal in this country for corporations to buy back their stocks. And what we saw from the tax bill it was a, 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 an interest, I think, in the beginning to making sure that people reinvest that money in jobs, um, uh, increase CapEx, and that's not what we've seen. What we've seen is corporate buybacks, and so it's natural as a result of what happened with the tax code to have a discussion about whether corporate buybacks is actually in the best interest of growing our economy. And so let's not conflate that with, with I think, um, what appears to be pretty extreme uh, individual income tax provisions that are being proposed by uh, a few people within the Democratic Party. It's not a Democratic Party position. And so I think that the president tonight is going to try and make it a Democratic Party position. And the question is, and what I would say is be careful what you ask for, because if Democrats win <laughs> on a platform of a 70 percent tax, right. that might be exactly what you get. Uh, but, but Heidi, let me let me let me just say uh, you may be the centrist uh, among the party, but you look at the vitriol that uh, was the and the attack on somebody like um, like Howard Schultz last week from Starbucks, who who, who at least indicated he might want to uh, run as what he called a centrist independent. And most of the arrows were coming from the left, and not even what might be considered the far left. Well, I think, it, I think everybody's on nerve because they're concerned that he's going to be the Ross Perot of this election and that he's going to make it more difficult. I mean, you even saw it from Bloomberg, who you can't say is an uber liberal, right, Andrew? Right. I mean, so at this, at this point, I think this isn't so much about who Howard Schultz is. It's about whether he, in fact, is going to be that guy that is going to take away an opportunity for a change in the White House. Senator, and that's what Democrats are responding to. Senator, does this pull the Democratic Party at all back towards the center when you have Howard Schultz running, or is that something that has no impact? I don't know. I think I think what's what's been ignored is there was recently a poll when everybody says, what do what do Democrats want in a candidate? I know and polling proves that what they want is they want someone who can beat President Trump. And, and they're willing to, you know, maybe even look beyond some of the positions people have taken if they think they're the best candidate in the arena to retake the White House. And so I think that there's going to be a lot of ideological discussion because most of the people who have gotten into this race so far represent a more, uh, you know, left part of the party. Once centrists come in, and I think that will happen, I think you will see kind of a change in the dialogue. And that's certainly what I hope is going to happen, because I don't think Who is that, that person? I, I is that Joe that Biden? I don't think you can beat extremism with extremism. So, but, but Heidi, who is that person? Is that a Joe Biden? Is that, is that a Michael Bloomberg? 
Where, where do you put Kamala I Harris? Think- well, it, well, I think Kamala Harris is is actually more towards the the center um, left. I don't think that that she represents the far left. Um, but but what I will tell you is I think that people like Michael Bennett, who are rumored to get in, um, people like Bloomberg, will in fact change the dialogue. And one of the things that I'm trying to do here, and other than impress you that I'm at Harvard, um, uh, we're trying to, to have a discussion about the real state of the union. And what I hope will happen is we start talking about those systemic issues that are going to challenge America's future and that we actually present the people of this country with a vision of where we're going to go forward from here on things like health care, on things like debt and deficit. These are critical issues that if we don't begin to solve them today could in fact cripple our economy and lead to, you know, disastrous results for our children and our grandchildren. So, Senator, building on that and given what you said about the importance of economic growth, the importance of private sector investment. What do you think the probability of having both parties come together on an infrastructure program is over the next 18 months? Is that even feasible at this point? I, I, I actually don't see that happening. I thought that our opportunity was last year and we fiddled it away on a, uh, you know, wasting time on issues that could be easily resolved like a border, you know, border security. And so now we're in this spot where you see trillion dollar deficits. How are you going to solve that problem by adding another trillion and a half? And, and the president has this public-private partnership initiative, which everybody within the construction industry, everybody who really looks at it, knows that that's not a direction that's going to give that hyperspeed to infrastructure development. I think it's going to take the next election before we see infrastructure. I'd be pleased if that isn't true. But I think if we actually do it now, we're going to get something that's much more anemic than what we actually need on infrastructure.